All right. In the lower right hand corner here, starting for Max Flow play. This is the quarterfinals. One, the winner of this series here moves on to the semi finals to play against Vegas Squadron. The losers, unfortunately, are out of the tournament. In the lower right hand corner, to start off for Max Flow play, finishing third place in Group B. We're only losing to a couple of. Uh, a couple of uh, guys along the way, including Alien Invasion and Vegas Squadron, and one more team who I can't quite remember. Starting for them, the pink Terran player, Soul. In the upper right hand corner, from ESC Icy Box, ESC finishing second in the season. They had a couple of losses, but that was about it, so not much stopped them on their way to this point so far. The green Zerg players, ESC Icy Boxes, as. So we've got a quick pause here. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm going to double check everything is still good and set to go, and it looks as though it is. So that's a good thing. That is reassuring. Awesome, so we are all set to go into this. Uh, once again, we are back in game, so let's get uh, back on in here. In the upper right, we do have airs once again, and in the lower right, we do have soul. So, ESC versus Maxwell here. Maxwell, as I said, they finished third in their group, uh, in group B. They finished behind Alien Invasion and Vega Squadron. Uh, Vega Squadron will be their match in the semi finals if they do prevail here against ESC Icy Box. I think it's probably fair to say that Max Flow are probably the slight underdogs, at least, in this match. I think the uh, teams are generally fairly evenly matched, but I do think uh, it will be uh, ESC Icebox who will be the slight favourites coming into this. Of course, behind Ayers and whoever they decide to send out second, they're probably going to rely on Showtime and Goody. And, uh, I mean, the, the, the really strong thing about uh, you know ESC is... A lot of their players can take, pretty much any of their players could take play, uh, games off of any of the Maxflow players. So that's where that real advantage comes from. Whereas Maxflow, you know, you know they could obviously take games off of their off of any of the players too. But once Showtime and Goody come out, it gets that that little bit harder for them to really make the magic happen. Um, I I can't quite remember. I know Maxflow lost to Alien Invasion and. Um, Lost to Alien Invasion, Team Alternate as well, actually, and Vega Squadron in their group. In Group A, ESC, I believe they lost to AT Gaming and Carnage Esports. So, um, you know, just a couple of uh, mistakes, uh, just a couple of losses, uh, two or three losses from either teams on their way to the playoffs right here. So, we're finally uh, actually getting into this game and. Uh, Finally got a Reaper on the way. It is a TVD to begin with on Frost, one of the larger maps of the map pool, of course. Um, so this Reaper uh, is going to come in, of course, its main goal here is to kind of come across and just, if it can do any damage to Lings, that's great. But most importantly, he wants to kind of just check this gas, and uh, you'll see gas is clear here, which is nice. Now you can start picking away at these drones, and uh, he's got a lot of time to kind of manipulate uh, around here. He loses that first uh, drone, and as the Reaper does jump on down to the low ground. Uh, second Reaper on the way to back him up. Factory and Reactor on the way to just follow this up though. And ooh, second drone will get onto the extractor just in time. So no further damage done for now. So not going to give up just yet though. He jumps back into this main base straight away. And uh, another couple of links are going to be going down here. Um, yeah, so another couple of links going down here. And uh, these Reapers now backing off once again. So... I mean, very standard opening builds here. It's just gasless, uh, you know, hatch first into cool, now taking double gas. Uh, some Reaper, uh, Reaper open from our Terran. And uh, nearly losing that Reaper here. But we'll just be able to keep that alive for a little bit longer. And uh, yeah, back at home, so he's uh, easy going down the third command center. Just in range of this Overlord, too. So this Overlord seen absolutely everything for airs. He's not going to be blind at all. He's going to know exactly what's on the way at every uh, at every point. And uh, so manages to get rid of a creep tumor there for a little bit longer. 
as these Reapers once again just heading away. Uh, he sold low gas, so he knows he doesn't have to kind of retreat with these Reapers at all. He knows it's going to be safe to keep them on the map. And uh, the first Hellion's on the way now. Another Reaper coming out as well. Okay, interest. I mean, usually if we see three Reapers, we see the three Reapers come out before we see the factory and the reactor. But uh, that does generally then delay the... Um, it does generally delay the timing of the Hellions coming out here. So, interesting to see Soul add on yet another Reaper after the... Um, Factory has been built in the reactor and they've done their switch rune and Hellions are beginning to be produced so a little bit interesting now he throws down that tech lab so you will just start looking to hand the stim with this third reaper in you he's really beginning to say right I am committing a lot towards just denying your third base uh, Hellion think about uh, just poking up here and uh, we'll try and get a little bit of vision we'll try and get a creature with it not quite successful and uh, just checking around for the third base most importantly right now as I see four gases actually taken for our Zerg player with a fairly fast lair on the way. So uh, let's go for some kind of uh, two base lair play um, before you can get his free third, before he gets his third base down. I'm going to take his third base around about now. He's got a single Evo chamber on the way. Um, so still a little bit kind of unaware as to what this could really be. And again, still very careful with these initial units here. He's not throwing them away. He's not just throwing them in towards nothing. And uh, this drone is going to head towards this. Expansion over here. We'll drop that down, and that is going to be his third base. Quite nice here. So we're actually seeing a little bit of an attack now from uh, Soul to commit for onto these uh, queens. Uh, it looks though as really doesn't want to use the uh, Zergans just yet. Doesn't want to get any of them roasted. As um, I don't know what button I just hit there, but yeah, he doesn't want to get any of them roasted. Just, so just making sure he defends with only queens until at least Zergan speed comes up. The creep continuing to start pushing out uh, past his ramp now. And uh, still back at home, I mean, he's just starting to power on up. He's uh, adding on a bunch of extra buildings. Misplaced this barracks just a little bit. And uh, again, he's double engineering there as well. So he's really just heading in towards the mid game now. Comes in, sees that third base as well. But I mean, from that time of the third base, he should have a pretty good assumption that something weird's going on. There is this lair finished, and we have got a spire on the way. So it's a fair, it is, again, a fairly fast spire here from uh, from Ayers. We're going to see the meters coming out fairly quickly. Um, but the way that Soul is going about his build, it shouldn't have too much of an effect on him. I mean, he's already got three barracks up. He's going to have plenty of marines out. Uh, he's probably even going to have medevacs out too. So, he's uh, if anything, this is pretty good for him in general just because his upgrades end up being pretty much on or around the same time. Maybe a slight bit ahead on one of them uh, ahead of the Zerg player. So, in general, Soul and uh, is both in pretty good positions. I mean, neither of these guys would really wish to be in a better position right now, or would expect to be in a better position. Mystery, but trying to get a scout does get denied uh, by the speedlings. But other than that, just a us on the way down now. And, uh, well, that's that's about it. Still has landed this third base. He's going to begin, uh, going to be able to begin mewing this up. And, uh, yeah, so. A few more marines on the way out. Hellions just uh, moving across the map. First mutalisks are on the way as well here. So, I mean, Ez is about to get these mutas out. And, you know, I guess they're not mega, mega early, but they're about a couple minutes earlier than you would usually expect these mutas to be popping. So, I mean, we'll see if you can get any damage done here. We can already see Souls actually invested in the turret in his natural. Uh, nothing in his main base. So, I mean, he might be able to come in and get a reactor or two. Uh, we actually see these Hellions heading around the top side of the map, may try and come and get a couple of shots over here. Uh, this drop completely shut down though by these uh, Mutalists and these Lings, and this is really nice actually. A uh, big pick off here for, from Ayers early in this game. Right now is the, uh, he is going to start taking some worker damage as these uh, Hellions all come in. And uh, that's a lot of work damage. Just upon this stack up once again. A couple of uh, these Hellions were uh, sat out of the back. Oh no! The oh my god, that was... A little bit disgusting. 18 workers killed and it's not over just yet. Now they morph into Hellbats. Oh my god, these Hellions are, uh, well, we're going to get dealt with pretty quickly here once uh, these mutants come in. But 22 workers killed. A fantastic little play uh, there by uh, Soul. And I think Ez was like, whoa, how did I mess that up so hard? Um, that, that, that should have been a much easier defense. You know, just move the drones away, send some units over. And it gets cleaned up pretty quickly. It should never do that kind of stuff. Should never do 22. Uh, try to get 22 workers. As uh, we see more units continue to come out here for Soul. Uh, Mutas coming in now. Uh, not able to do any damage just yet. Uh, things, yeah, quite rightly turn away very quickly after coming up this ramp. 
these mirrors heading back home right now gonna uh, jo uh, join up with the rest of these mirrors actually and uh, fourth base just being established for our Zerg player he kinda needs to get some bailings on the way he's 2-2 uh, two -two a little bit behind the Terran players as well so Sol uh, definitely having kind of the pace in this game he's gonna be able to just uh, kind of safely move out when he wants to and also when he does move out it's probably gonna be with an upgrade advantage for a little while so he can really kind of force the fight no uh, bailing speed either for uh, Ares so oh, Ares like He's he's kind of just making these mistakes. I don't know what's really riled him. He got off to a great start with uh, picking off that medevac, uh, with picking off that dropship, that double dropship. Um, but now he's I mean he's really made, been making some mistakes since then. No bailing speed. He still doesn't actually have any bailings. That this should be a dead fourth base if someone wants to commit. He scans and sees absolutely nothing here, which is you know a little bit worrying because you know he doesn't know exactly what's here. He will actually stim in. He will just go and uh, go for this hatchery, and he will get this. I mean the bailings just are not here quite yet. And uh, Ares unfortunately just not quite able to uh, have anything out really right now to deal with because the meters are here and uh, oh well that wasn't the contrary of the with one of them going down immediately and that overseer coming up to help clear out these mines. Some lingers coming down to the low ground to try help out as well. A single drone pops out and somehow does manage to survive at this fourth base. So fourth base can be retaken but as time goes on so just gets into a better and better position. I mean a fourth command center is halfway done for him. He's uh, just slowly sitting on the edge of this creep. He can start uh, picking off this uh, these creep tumors as well if he wants to invest a couple of scans. Reinforcements coming across the map and 2-2 is about to finish. So he really right now will be looking to force a fight from his opponent. A couple of marines uh, stimming all over the place. Mutalisks trying to uh, chase down. Uh, now he could die uh, well. Just go off that dropship in fact there. As uh, Scan comes down, so should be tiptoeing forward here, looking to clean out some of this creep. And Ares is going to come in and try and turn this around. He's only got a few banners though, and well, the mines, oh, the mine hits are okay, but there's just no, so many marines left over here. The mutants on their own are not going to be able to deal with this. A single lone baneling rolls on forward, but it's just not enough at all. And I mean, Ares just hasn't been efficient in this game at all just yet. And plus two melee attacks finishes, but he's also forgot plus two uh, carapace. And uh, I mean the mistakes are just racking up here for Ares from uh, ever since those uh, drones got roasted, the 23 drones killed, he's just kind of made mistake after mistake, no centrifugal hooks, no banes in time for the push, and uh, well, I mean now we see these, uh, some of these SCVs going down at this full phase, but four over here along with some marines is enough to turn this around, and uh, so we'll continue with his momentum up this top side of the map. Um, you know, a lot of these mistakes from our uh, Zerg player very well could have stemmed from just losing them workers initially. You know, he didn't have the money to uh, make the bailings in time, etc, etc. But, I, uh, you know, you got to you got to ask yourself how much does that really have an effect. We've got, you know, it's all over the map right now. Spawn and Pool is going to go down here. To oh, no, he leaves it alive uh, on 3 HP. A little bit of a mistake there by Soul. He uh, is going to begin dropping and just targeting that and he does get it. At the same time, he's got units over here as well. And Ares does not cancel that, so another kill. And at the same time, he's got units over here. And even if he just trades against these mutas, that's great. That's three, four mutas already going to go down. And uh, again, I mean, this is trades that Ares. Well, he's getting in the medevacs, which is pretty huge. Um, still a drop in this main base. So, so Ares is being pulled all over the place right now. No fourth base for him either. So has that uh, fourth base of his own up in mining. Uh, some circles kind of going for a counter attack, but getting denied almost immediately. And, uh, I mean, finally the drops are cleaned up, but there's just a big attack through the middle, and there's barely any balance here to defend this. And, uh, it looked as though so was once again looking to take down a, uh, fourth base, but that fourth base just isn't even up there. That's how far ahead he is. 3-3 free -free on the way for our Terran. Uh, 3-3 free -free not even going to be in sight for our Zerg player for a long time. There's no way he can afford to invest into an infestation pit and a hive right now. And, uh, I mean, the, the momentum will just continue forward here for Soul. It looks as though Maxmo are going to get off to a good start in this best of seven. A good start which I definitely feel like they need. I definitely feel like they are ever so slightly the... I feel like... I still feel like uh, ever so slightly yes, he will be the favourites coming into this match. So, um... Well, they're uh, kind of sneaking forward here, but... I mean, Soul is just so well pre -spirit. As soon as uh, Ares commits to any kind of engagement, he is just going to be signing his... Uh, basically signing uh, his certificate for his death. Because he's just not going to be able to trade efficiently. A few moons coming forward here. Uh, slowly just splitting these up separately. The mutas will come into clear. So, I mean, there's a decent number of mutas. The problem is, there's just not anything else to kind of back up these mutas at this point. And a four, uh, a four combined with a mine hit, taking down a lot of these. And Bane's kind of rolling forward, and a few of them will go down, just free damage. 
And uh, more lanes continue to come on out here as uh, another spawn pool is being made. So now we've got a second spawn pool on the way. Oh, we're on to the spire. Spires don't usually look like that today. Pretty, un 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 a little bit, pretty uninteresting engagement over here as the mutants are going to fly in and just try and clean up. Uh, Medivac back micro on the fall will allow to do a little bit of extra damage here. Some Ling's going to come forward along with these Bane Lings. And, uh, well, I mean, again, it's just not going to work out at all. It's not enough Bane Lings. The Mutas are going to take loads of damage here, and the them is just continually falling. They're all going to go down, and Soul is going to secure game number one here. Four max will play in this best of seven. All kill, GG. Is this, the Spire isn't usually like that, is it? Right? Like, am I being crazy? Spire doesn't look like that usually. It's like a stone spire. Right? Like, I, I, I swear it down. Like, I, I know sometimes buildings creep over each other, I, I get creeped up, but that seems like a little bit extreme. Anyway, guys, we are 1 0 right now. 4 max for a play in this best of 7 in the quarterfinals here of the SC2 ITL season two how's everyone in the chat doing um pleasure to be with you all now that i've calmed down relaxed and uh actually got some uh control over the city over the city current situation um so yeah how's everyone doing we're gonna jump to a quick commercial break here guys while we uh get set up for game number two it's gonna be uh the next player from esc on the uh, whichever map they want to play on so uh while we get that map pick set and the lobby created we're just going to create, uh, run a quick commercial break. So thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, hopefully we can only get better from the <laughs> what was a pretty crappy start for us here. So guys, we'll be back here in about three minutes time. Thanks for tuning in. This is the SHITL Season 2 quarter. Season 2 quarterfinals here. This is our third of four quarterfinals. Already in the uh, past week or so, we have seen uh, Vegas Quadrant take down against All Authority 4-3. And advance on to the semi-finals. They play the winner of this match here today, ESC Icy Box against Max Flow Play. In the upper half of the bracket, we saw AT Gaming just last night take down with a 4-1 victory. Was it last time? I'm pretty sure it was last night. Um, <laughs> if it wasn't last night, I'm just losing it. Um, take down, um, who did AT Gaming take down? Gravity with a 4-1 scoreline. So congrats. And they are waiting for the winners of Alien Invasion and My Insanity in the semi-finals. Alien Invasion versus Mind Sand will take place on Tuesday, 8th of July at 6 p.m. CEST, Central European Standard Time, Summer Time. Uh, so do go check us out. Uh, come check it out there. It will be on this stream as well. So if you want to see when we go live for that or any other of our events, um, which will not be for quite some time now in all honesty because we are um, putting everything on hold uh, because I need some time. I'm going on holiday in uh, like 10-ish days. Uh, so, and I need sometimes just sort everything out as well for our summer league, but, um, but yeah, just, if you're enjoying the show, if you want to see more of our content, do hit the follow button. Up next here in this best of seven, as you can see, it's 1-0 right now to Max Flow Play. So, for game number two, we're heading into King Sejong Station and a TVP. Seoul winning a TVZ last game is going to be a different test for him here, as his TVP will be tested against Showtime. In the lower right, the pink, uh, pink Zerg player. Wow, what a traitor I am. The pink Terran player from Max Flow Play. It's Seoul. Max Flow Play, predominantly a, uh, predominantly a uh, Polish team, of course. Well, you know, I say predominantly, they are completely a Polish team. 100% uh, a Polish team, so be interesting to uh, see how, how they do I think I mean in the left hand corner we have Showtime from ESC he's the blue pros player ESC are a German team of course I'm trying to think they've definitely had non-German players on their team in the past but now I I'm, now I'm kind of questioning whether um, now I'm kind of questioning if they have any other any other non-German players on their team actually right now um, I'll find that out for us in a couple of moments here. As uh, I do some sneaky liquipedian. Um, I don't think they do. But there's probably someone I'm just... I mean, okay, they've got... I guess they've got... Um, they've got Jacko, who's from Luxembourg. I guess there's one player. Um, okay, yeah, of course. They've got Grave from Poland as well. Oh my god, they've got they've got a bunch of guys, actually. But it's kind of bugging out. 
Okay, so yeah, you know, they've got a few guys that are, um, they've got a few guys who are, a couple of guys who aren't, uh, who aren't German, but they are mostly German based. So German versus po Germany versus Poland kind of here today uh, in this match. Artox, Chris, go, go, ESE, hashtag, be hashtag bear vision in the chat. So, uh, if you guys are cheering for anyone today, do you, uh, let us know who you are cheering for. If you guys are up late tonight, make sure to come check out our first SE2 Improved Team League America broadcast. And I'll be there uh, tonight from 1.30 a.m. C, Central European Standard Time. It'll be Team Gravity against Integrity Gaming. Should be fun. But let's get into this game. We have a Stargate here, a very quick Stargate, in fact, from, uh, Showtime. Um... Maxil has opened with a command center first here. He's got Bat Funker on the high ground. Uh, the membership call being a bit annoying on the low ground. And uh, you know what? Uh, an SCV gets denied. The first Oracle must be about to come out here. It's been Coronavirus is about halfway done. So, um, well, I mean, there's going to be what? There's five Marines here right now. There should be six and seven before an Oracle gets here. But of course, they can't be everywhere at the same time. So, Showtime does definitely need to do some damage with this. Um, oh wow, this is actually kind of bad, This uh, these marines moving now, because if an oracle just catches five of them, they're all going to be dead. And a uh, stalker already actually going to pick off one of these if it gets high ground vision, but it doesn't. Not quite. The oracle can still take this down until these extra marines join in, so um, Bunker going to come down on the low ground now as well. As uh, still just preparing to try and take this expansion. The expansion for Showtime is on the way. Here comes this oracle, it's going to fly in. What's it going to go for first? It cannot take on these marines just yet. And that is exactly what, um, so, uh, what um, Showtime is checking for. Okay, he's going to go for it. He's going to lose his mothership for while doing this. But the Stalker comes in as well. And it looks as though he will just, just take down all of the uh, Marines here. But that means there's not actually much left for this Oracle to do. Um, I guess it uh, allows control of this low ground here. One, uh, some SEVs being pulled to try and get rid of this, uh, get this bunker down. And uh, this uh, Stalker trying to get one more SCV kill this. Oh, this Marine just gets in the bunker. That should be a dead Oracle now. He chases it. He doesn't quite get it. The Stalker saved him there. And uh, now we're just seeing Soul kind of just migrating at the low ground. He's got another uh, Marine on the way. Uh, turret cancelled. And Showtime is doing some pretty decent damage. Behind this, of course, uh, Soul is getting his stim pack. He's got an engineering bay down so he can get these turrets. He can head into plus one pretty soon as well. Showtime with his forge on the way. Robo already down. He's pretty much ready to continue on in this game. He's actually free workers ahead, so I'd say that's a pretty good job so far. As uh, he will just continue her house. And this stalk is more or less dead uh, in the long run here. Maybe. He should be able to get this marine if he wants, but he just runs straight past. I uh, will not keep that alive. So, um, Soul, keeping it alive, uh, keeping us alive here, and, uh, Showtime just, uh, still with this Oracle, I really feel like this Oracle should have died, nine kills altogether, seven workers, in fact, wow, altogether, I didn't, I think it was quite that many, but I guess it is reflecting the worker count right now, 35, 229, Oracle comes in, we'll get one more worker, and this is the power of the Oracle, um, before any kind of real... Uh, you know, solid defenses here. Ooh, playing risky games here. Five HP left. Uh, one hit away from death. The Oracle does manage to escape once again. And uh, did delay this factory by a couple of uh, moments, and that's quite important, of course. Delaying the starport as long as you can will delay the amount of time, uh, will delay the Terran being able to come across the map and pressure you. And the longer you have before you get pressured, of course, the longer you have to just build up an army, build up some uh, units, and really get your tech out. You can see the Robo Bay finishing here, the plus one on the way as well. Uh, so, pretty even game altogether. Twilight Council is going to come down also in the back. A scan here doesn't reveal too much, right? Okay, reveals the rubber base. So he knows Colossi on the way. Um, ball together, I think, again from that scan, you know, he can, you know, he sees Colossi on the way. He might think there may be some kind of timing because it's a fairly fast rubber base, I suppose. Uh, I guess not. I guess the first boss is going to come out about more 10 30. It's not that strange. Twilight on the way too to continue into his plus two, so. Um, just Showtime just building up here, probably wants to build towards a uh, third base of course at some point in the next two, three minutes. And uh, you see a couple of gateways more from He's actually going for Blink uh, immediately here, which of course will help him shut down drops. It will help him defend his cross side as well, but it's also very good offensively if he wants to move across the map and go for it. And also, considering he's going for plus one uh, attack now, you know, he could maybe go for a little bit of a timing. I guess, I mean, the, the moment's really kind of gone. It's, it'd be really kind of late to kind of come in. But uh, I guess the possibility kind of still is there. We'll see how many gateways he adds on and how aggressive he really wants to be with this. 
Um, he's, only got, he's only got three gateways right now, so I still feel like he's just going to be building up towards a third. A third base, which Soul already has, very standard in TVP, of course, as the Terran player. Uh, very standard to um, go for the... Um, to go for that faster third base than the Paros. There's a third base for my Paros player too. So just getting this blink out to help defend against drops. I uh, don't know why you get plus one attack instead of plus two armor. I feel like plus two armor is always... I, well, okay, I guess it makes more sense if he's going for the blink score because he has a drop to go into natural. It makes a little bit more sense because if you're going straight into charge, you know, the armor is then definitely going to be better. But if you're going straight into blink stalkers, you're going to have primarily stalkers and colossi in your army. Then uh, that plus one attack is probably going to be a lot more useful than plus one armor. As I saw, has got his own third base on the way now. Pylon was set up over here, but will get shut down pretty quickly. As uh, we see a drop coming in towards his third base too, but Showtime with uh, a couple of open colossus here to shut that down. Stalkers could uh, blink. Okay, they don't have blink just yet, but uh, if still isn't careful, these stalkers can blink to the low ground if uh, their marines are in the uh, are up in the um, or in the meta back. Ooh, what did that mine get? Got two kills. Okay, so not that many. Oracle providing detection, and now all of a sudden the uh, Filton Overcharge dies, so hopefully he uh, recognizes this. Drop coming in once again, even if you can just get a power on here, this is some nice free damage being done by our Terran. A couple of workers killed here or there, as uh, he's actually going to start working on these rocks as well. This mine did get cleaned out in the end, and uh, Showtime holding on well right now. Third base up and running for him, 60 probes and 57 SCVs. It's pretty even in terms of that, the upgrades are in, uh, in, uh, in favor of our Protoss player as well. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I was going to mention this much earlier, but it's kind of really weird. We saw two factories being added on uh, with that Oracle coming in, and this is uh, going to be a huge transition into kind of biomech, I suppose, from Seoul. It's going to be kind of really, really weird. And another mine coming in here uh, will get picked up, though. There's a blink trying to pick off a medevac. Doesn't quite... Oh, he does just get it there. But uh, does also manage to unload this mine from the uh, medevac at the same time. A hallucinated Phoenix coming in to just scout about, see what's up. And, uh, I mean, he will see these, uh, this added factory. He will see two factories now, and, I mean, that is definitely intriguing. You can see he's already starting to add on an immortal to his composition, realizing that immortals will definitely help out against any kind of mech units, which, yeah, his opponent is going for. He has seen with this observer as well, of course, he sees the tanks and the hellbat here, so he recognizes the uh, kind of transition going on. I mean, this is actually turning into full-on mech. He's not making any more bio units, so it's kind of weird. He's been kind of buying time for himself by dropping with the few bio units he has. And now he's going into mech, and at the same time he's thrown down a ghost academy. So he's already got the infrastructure there to build into to build up um, to build ghosts, which will be very useful. You know, one of the things that people say is an issue with mech is how do you get ghosts out to really deal with a lot of archons? You know, ghosts are almost essential. Um, so he's kind of found a way here by the bio opening. He has the infrastructure to go straight into ghosts, and he's added the infrastructure to just head into basically a pure mech play. A couple of ghosts on the way. And, uh, well, our pros play, he's investing into Storm. His 2-2 two is about to finish up here. And, um, it's going to be a very interesting game. I mean, uh, four Marines moving forwards. And uh, they all get cleaned out pretty quickly. Not too much of a worry there. As you can see, all the upgrades starting to finish up on the right-hand side of the screen right now. So, uh, one, uh, one, one mech weapons finishing up for our Terran player. Plus two, plus two for our Protoss. And... Still kind of really intrigued. I mean, this is this is heading into full-on mech with a handful of bio units to kind of back it up as well. So is preparing to move out on the map. Now, if this works, I will be more than amazed. How has he got this hotkey? Like, uh, oh, apparently, apparently I don't remember the hotkeys for, uh, I thought I did know them, but apparently not. Um, so yeah, I mean, kind of interesting here. So he's got a lot of kind of control. He's got ghosts, he's got vikings, he's got some bio. And tanks to siege as well, so his control is going to have to be impeccable. A couple of their uh, Templars kind of leading the way here. They've got Storm in one second, and there it is. They already have the energy. Storms will help a lot in terms of just slowly moving down. There's a nice blink forward. Picks off a little bit here. Scan it up ahead. Will allow these ghosts to get in range to uh, feedback if necessary. And uh, Terran players just slowly pushing up this right-hand side of the map. And as you can see, just a little bit at a time here. Moving a few stalkers, thinking of moving forward and uh, going for something. A single ghost begins to lead ahead here. He wants to land a couple of VMPs, of course, and well, does he land them? Not just yet. Oh, oh, completely misses with two AMPs and with only three ghosts in the army. Or four. Oh, he's actually got five. Okay, it's not as huge as I thought. 
Yeah, he's has a lot more burst than I actually thought he would. Showtime's basically trying to buy time. You know, the longer he waits, the bigger of an army he has, the better this is going to be. He uh, moves a few swords a little bit too far forward. He's morphing a couple of Archons. The Archons definitely going to be useful in this. As uh, the Protoss is actually coming up to the high ground now. The uh, Terran player feeling as though he can move much further forward. There's still these ghosts here. He's stimming some of his bio units. They're going to run into this. He's actually going to commit to this fight. Shields are all gone on the Protoss with, them, uh, series of with that series of EMPs. But uh, a lot of kind of the front line of the Terran is gone as well. Oh, huge flag from behind. These tanks getting flanked by the Zelds. And this is a great play by Showtime. He's getting in right into the tank line almost immediately here. The rest of the tanks are going to get cleaned up. A blink forward is going to clean up these medevacs as well. And a couple of Archons, rem oh, a single Archon remains. A bunch of Stalkers and uh, most of the Colossus. And what an engagement that was by Showtime. These Zelds coming in for the flank from behind. And that was absolutely game changing, I feel. I mean, that was the difference between being able to close in on their tanks and shut down their DPS a lot faster than uh, not being able to. Zelda's continuing to chase forward here. There's a ghost which is going to just get targeted down. Gets feedback actually. Uh, he does manage to knock down these uh, rocks. But the Stalkers blink up to the high ground and take down the tanks already. So there's not much left here. Stalk tries to secure this fourth base. But he's just not going to be able to hold on. Another Archon comes in. The Zelda's are going to come in as well. But, uh, with the Colossus is actually just going to be GG right then and there. What a game. What a game. Um, that was looking very scary by Soul until Showtime just came from a completely different direction. Um, and just kind of said, whoa, what's up? And uh, wow, I mean, that was just an incredible engagement once again from my Protoss player to just shut that down and to even up our series. 1-1 one, one right now is our score between these two teams. We're going to be getting into game number 3 as soon as we can guys. Before that happens, we need to wait for the team, uh, for Maxwell to play, to play, pick their second player and to pick their map. So uh, we're going to head into a quick commercial break once again here. But if you're enjoying the stream, do hit the follow button. And uh, if you're in the break, you can head on over to our website, sc2improve.net, where if you're interested, you'll be able to find uh, a recap of last night's series against between AT Gaming and uh, Han. You'll be able to find a preview for STLTL America. You can find out about AT Gaming against uh, Gravity last night. You can find out a bit more about everything, basically. So sc2improve.net, good place to check out if you've got a couple minutes uh, free uh, during this break. Guys, we'll be back here in a couple moments of time with game number three of this best seven all kill for the SCTRTL Season 2 quarterfinals. Guys, welcome back to SC2 Improved Team League Season 2 uh, quarterfinals. We're in the playoffs after 11 weeks of group stages. Here we are. Uh, we've already had two of our round of eight matches. Vegas Squadron defeated against All Authority and AT Gaming defeated ESC, uh, sorry, Team Gravity. And we're into our third quarter final right now. ESC Icy Box against Max Flow Play. It's tied up one to one. Uh, our final quarter final taking place on Tuesday. My Insanity versus Alien Invasion. Definitely not going to be one to miss. As uh, that will be a, a will probably be the best quarter final we're going to see. Um, so, I mean, in a bit of rivalry there as well because Alien Invasion actually got knocked out by My Insanity 3 4 at um, the end of uh, in season one. So. Anyway, it's 1-1 right now in this best of seven all-kill match. And we have a PVT on our hands once again. It's WMTK, the second Terran player from Maxwell play, comes out. And he's going to have to do some heavy defending here in the lower left-hand side of the map. The other Terran player, WMTK. He's going up against the blue pro 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 the blue pros player in the upper right-hand corner from CESE Icy Box Showtime. And again, he has to do some heavy defending because look at this. Already on the way across the map from Showtime. It's a single little probe coming across here to uh, set up some kind of early proxy in this game. And uh, there's that 100 minerals for the pylon. He drops it down. I mean, it, I guess this has to be a stalker rush, right? I mean, what kind of proxies can you do in TV, in PvT? I mean, WMTK, I guess he's not walling off here. So, realistically, I guess a proxy 2 gate would just work. There's the first gate, going to come down right here on 10 supply. Does he save it for another? Does he wait for the gas? What's he going to do? He moves the probe away, so it looks as though he's just going to head back home and mine. And uh, probably just take a gas and uh, Corona burst out a stalker here very, very quickly, very early on. Or at least a zealot and then a stalker very early on. A reaper on the way out. I mean, reapers aren't necessarily great against holding off this kind of early aggression. Showtime taking the tower on his route back home. And he is on the way back there right now. So, um... Well, gas gets taken here. So, as we expected, basically, we're going to see at least a Zealot out of here, surely. And a Cybernetics call. We don't actually see another pylon up just yet. So, 
Cyber Next Core is going to be a little bit delayed. Uh, we're going to see a Palom coming up in the back. Cyber Next Core will be a bit delayed. It'll be a little while before we actually see a Stalker come out. Uh, not sure if that's just a mistake or a miscalculation in the build. WMTK is heading across the map to scout, so this is pretty important. He's going to get some kind of information before he heads across with the Reaper. Which is kind of nice, but it'll still take a little while for this uh, SCV to head across. First of all, it being Chrono Boosted out, I mean, the Reaper, of course, on its own, won't be able to really deal too much to that. There's a Cyber Next Core, so... How long is the Cyber Next Core? 50 seconds. 50 seconds to build this and then head into a Stalker. I mean... So he's going to have a Stalker on the way just before, just as this Reaper is starting to head out, but he might keep the Reaper at home once this uh, SCV comes in and sees there's, nothing, sees there's pretty much nothing here. Uh, an SCV coming down to low ground, getting ready to expand. We've had one worker left in gas, which means a reactor is going to be built almost immediately on this barracks, which isn't good, of course. And uh, Reaper now heading out. It will just miss this Zealot and the Zealot coming in. A bunker starts immediately, but this is what these Zealots are for. They're here to deny this bunker while the Stalker comes up. And uh, this is pretty huge. Uh, immediately, SCV is actually just pulled. But uh, this is going to mean some pretty serious worker damage is going to be done. It takes a long time for a Reaper to kill a Zealot. As you can see right now, this uh, Reaper actually gets turned away as well. It takes him a couple of hits already. There's a lot of damage being done here. This Reaper can, of course, control basically forever, but not if he keeps taking hits on it like this. This bunker will just get targeted down. Ooh, getting very close there. Another a whole ton of SCV is now being pulled, but here comes the Stalker as well. This Reaper needs to be very careful. It's on very low HP. He takes another hit, and this is a dead Reaper now. Surely. Oh, just avoids it. And uh, coming down to the low ground, there are a lot of these SCVs coming in and fighting. And uh, Reaper uh, Zealot's trying to escape as they have no shields remaining on them, no health either. And uh, well, Showtime should get a little bit more out of this so far. He's got 9 SCV kills. Uh, yeah, 9 SCV kills, and that's going to be about it. Second Stalker pops out. He can't just run straight past us. A couple of Marines about to come up, so he's going to opt not to. I think that may be the better choice in the long run. Expansion comes down on the high ground, but a lot of damage taken by WMTK here early on. And expansion coming up for Showtime as well. And with a 10 worker lead, I mean, you know, this is an early advantage for him. Mothership Core is out by this time the Reaper gets across the map. It's not going to do too much. I wonder if it would have been... It's kind of hard to say, I guess, because the Reaper was kind of essential in taking down the health of the Zealots. Um, at the same time, and if he'd gone across the map, I mean, he would have had to focus so much to make sure he didn't get surrounded to, while trying to pick off probes. Two more gates coming down. I mean, this is just indicative of Showtime saying, I'm going to walk up this ramp and try and bust you because you just don't have that many SCVs. Um, of course, if a good defense comes off from Show, uh, WMTK, then it's very possible that this kind of play could just put Showtime behind once again. This pylon, of course, already here will act as a proxy. And uh, may send the probe out to get a bit of a closer proxy pylon up. This uh, Mothership Core not going anywhere, where uh, really wants to make sure it's just here at home, always ready to defend this Reaper. Bunch of Marines coming out. And uh, thinking about coming forward, and they will try and uh, trade here. But these Stalkers, ooh, oh, both players are a little bit unsure about what they actually want to commit to there. None of the Marines does die. That's actually two Marines just gone down there. And with Warp Gate now finished, three gateways uh, pretty much done, we're going to see probably a Warp and a Zealots here. And then we might see just a push straight up this ramp. There's only four, uh, a few Marines. A sentry coming out first. In fact, two sentries coming out. So he's going to wait for another warping of units to get uh, the cell at the front line to tank for him. Almost, uh, well, absolutely essential here to be able to defend. So showtime. Uh, this is uh, Reaper trying to do some damage. Hot like done nothing at all just yet. We'll come down to the natural to try and help out. A couple of probes will try and chase it. The Mothership Core chasing it at the same time. Showtime waiting for one more warping over here. He actually warps in a stalker back at home. To deal with this aggression, I, I, I mean, and then the longer he waits, the less likely any kind of attack up this ramp is going to work. That being said, I guess he still has a fair amount of DPS. He still only has two Zelts, and the Zelts are the real worry here, I feel. Uh, you know, you need a lot of Zelts just to tank the damage coming up the ramp. You know, Zelts are basically everything. And oh, but WMTK gets rid of his bunker. Does he feel maybe a little bit too safe here? Well. I think yes, maybe very well be the answer. This Showtime may not actually want to. Uh, oh, this is perfect. He uh, just immediately drops a force field. Smith's this army, maybe not as in half as he would have liked, but it's still definitely in half. And a few Marines up at the top here don't really help him out as much as they would like. And this is maybe Showtime's plan all along not to actually run up this ramp at all, but to just sit and throw down a force field, deny this expansion for as long as he can. And he will actually now deny this uh, natural expansion. It's going to fly. It might even just die. At this point, it, I guess it can kind of hide down here a little bit, but that's about it. And, uh, I mean, WMTK is really hurting right now. Showtime finally gets a robot facility up, but, I mean, it's not really been a worry for him up until now. Uh, with a mine on the way, I mean, that's good until the Observer comes out, of course. 
Showtime, I'm surprised he's not just chasing this down even further. At least get it burning, for example, just to make sure, you know, it's kind of dying. Uh, you know, just to shut it down completely. It will eventually die if it starts burning over here. SCVs cannot reach it. Uh, your WMTK will slowly try and push down his ramp here with this mine. I see, okay, he's just going to leave it up here. So he's not really in any rush. Well, I mean, he kind of needs to be in a rush, but he's uh, not. A hallucinated Phoenix comes out and oh, thinking about it, he will get down the ramp here. Showtime a little bit slow on the force fields, has to use two in the end. Uh, WMTK kind of backs off to an interesting location, would it be better to come along this way to force the um, to force this uh, mine to actually go off here. Oh, this mine does go off on a single zealot. Oh, it goes off in hallucination, even worse. Uh, this zealot will uh, face a very quick death anyways and Showtime has breached the main base, he's going to come in here. Force field not actually that will be placed in the end. Second force field comes down. Stimpak has just finished. There's not that many units, and the reactor's gonna get killed off here. A couple of marines coming out, but they will go down pretty quickly as well. And I mean, this is just more or less just waiting for the game to be called here. As their showtime just backs off a little bit. The Reapers come all the way back home as well. But WMTK really has nothing. He walks into this mine, he's kind of forgotten about this, so that's some pretty nice damage here. But still, I mean, Showtime is the player doing all the real damage where it counts. More workers going down. WMTK about to be below for 20 workers once again in this game. A couple of Marauders at the front here. We'll do a good job against these Stalkers, of course. Um, but again, it's just not really enough. Let's see if he's pulled once again. Even if these SDVs help to clean this up, this is just not going to be enough in the end, right? Like, there's just so much damage done. 18 SCVs and 58 probes. Here comes another wave of stalkers. We've got Colossus upgrades, everything on the way. Back at home, GG called, and Showtime takes game number two. Propelling the ESC IC box uh, into a 2-1 lead now in this best of seven all kill. And I wonder who, I, I mean, Max Flu, I get the feeling that final players will be a combination of Pal and Zazu, so Proz and Zerg. Not sure who they send out next. Maybe a Zerg because you know PvP can always be a little bit. Ooh. So maybe a Zerg player to come out next uh, on their map pick as well. They can definitely pick a great map on for ZVP. So that could be the way Max Flow look to take this now, as uh, they try and even. They will be looking to even up this series for the second time. Um, it's one one. Oh, sorry, no, it's not two one one. It is da -da 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 -da. two one right now. Two ESC icy box showtime currently carrying the flag for them. Guys, we're going to take once again a quick commercial break here where we get game number four set up and ready to go. Don't go too far because this is the SC2 Improved Team League and I'm sure there are going to be more amazing matches on the way very, very shortly. As soon as we have the player and map pick coming out from Max Low Play. We're back and getting into game number four here. We're just creating the lobby as we speak. It's going to be Pal, the next player out from Max Flow Play. As... Um we get this all set up. Just uh, invite our players. And uh, Pals, we are back anyway. So we've got a couple of moments here. So uh, how is everyone in the chat doing? How are you all feeling today? You having a good day? What day is it? Is it Thursday today? It is. It is Thursday today. So how is everyone doing on this lovely Thursday? Almost the end of the week. You guys still have work and stuff. So uh, almost all done for the week. Weekend is fast approaching here, and of course, what weekend we have coming towards us with the um, uh, WCS finals weekend, of course, round of eight, round of four, and finals from WCS EU and America. So, always that's always going to be pretty awesome. So, uh, quite excited about that. I'll be definitely watching a whole bunch of it myself. We're um, currently waiting for uh, Pal to come back from his BRB. And then we'll be able to get back into our uh, back get back into this series. It's two one right now in favor of uh, ESC Icy Box Showtime, doing most of the damage for his uh, four ESC so far. Uh, Soul took down Airs in uh, game number one, and that's why it is a currently a one two scoreline. So uh, Pal has just jumped in here, so it should be uh, all set to go in just a couple of moments. And uh, they are both ready, uh, and they are, we'll be able to start this countdown. So, right now, we have um, yes, right now we have uh, Pal looking to keep ESC Icy Box away from uh, going to match point here. I'm imagining Zazu will be the ace player from Maxflow if Pal does fall. 
Uh, they've picked Barry Go Round for this PvP, so uh, let's see how things are going to turn out as you do load on up into this game. Just very quickly get everything set up. And in the six o'clock position, we will be starting with the new player in the in the uh, series, the yellow pros play from Max Flow Play. It's Pal. So I mean, Showtime in the upper left, the teal pros play from ESC Icy Box has kind of just made more or less kind of just a little bit kind of fools of his Terran opponents so far. I mean, his match against Soul is, I guess, fairly close. Uh, closer than the. Uh, uh, definitely close to them. I mean, against WMTK, which we just saw, he just kind of went for the proxy, did a load of damage, and he just continued to do damage from there. Shut his opponent from ever getting out. Uh, shut his opponent down from ever getting an actual expansion. And, you know, he was just in an unwinnable position and against Soul. You know, Soul looked like he was in a fairly good spot. He looked like he was doing something really innovative. It looked like it was going to be great for him, but then he lost that one big engagement when the Zelts came in for a flank from behind, and from there, all of a sudden, um, you know, Showtime just. just shot forward in the game so showtime not really been messing around so far we've seen two pvts from him and now comes the pvp from pal to try and stop him from getting a third kill in this best of seven so so far we've not seen an all kill in the playoffs we've only had two matches um yesterday at gaming's jonah looked as though he was about to get it but then it was stopped by space marine in map number four of um at gaming against gravity and uh, Vegas Squadron uh, against the against all authority never looked like it was going to be an all kill. Uh, AAA took a 2-0 lead in that series before it ended up uh, before in the end it ended up 4-3 in favor of Vegas Squadron. So pretty pretty crazy stuff so far. First player to scout here will actually be Showtime. He comes across the map with this probe. Coming in to have a bit of a look, see, see what he can spot out. Spot. This probe gonna come along here and uh, come on into this main base. So uh, he does see his opponent here, and uh, we'll see double gas taken. We'll see only two works in this gas. Three so does. You know, nothing too ridiculous, nothing too crazy. Pretty standard stuff. And you actually will see the second gateway coming down as well for his opponents. Pretty nice information here initially. As uh, he's also going to add on a second gateway. So both of these guys mirroring each other so far in a mirror matchup. And uh, Warp Gate starts up a little bit faster here for Showtime. Uh, it looks as though Pal prioritizing getting his Mothership Core out a little bit sooner. Uh, Showtime not getting his Mothership Core just yet. Now he does. So, you know, just ever so slight differences. Nothing too ridiculous. You know, nothing which is going to really be game changing here. As uh, the probes for either player will now head back actually towards the middle. So both of these guys are going to look to uh, try and take control of the middle. And uh, we'll see which of them is going to come out ahead if either of them do come out ahead. Pal should spot this. He does spot this. And there we have it. The probe war is taking place in the middle. Ooh. Ooh. Showtime actually decides to opt out of this. I couldn't uh, tell if it was Pal or Showtime. He was getting the first hit there. It was pretty close. Mothership Core coming out for Showtime anyway. Uh, and for Pal, so you know, right now you can see both of these guys are really kind of completely mirroring each other's actions as we have what's going to be a pretty intense micro battle in the middle of the map here. Uh, Mothership Core coming in here for Pal does take a couple of shots for free. He will try and start getting this probe of Showtime though. His own probe looping around the top side of the map as uh, we do now start to have a divergence in the build. Twilight comes for Showtime, a third gateway for Pal, so he's going to ramp up the aggression here. Oh, maybe not. He's going for a target too, but he's still going to have these three gateways kind of early if he does want to do something. This probe's actually going to get found though. Brilliant uh, kind of just sense by Showtime. Mothership Core perfectly in position to shut this down. And you can see it's probably because he's thinking of doing something similar himself. Moving around with this probe around this right hand side of the map now. And already setting the pylons for himself here for his blink play to kind of come to fruition. I'm not sure who this favors more. I think it's probably going to be a little bit better for Showtime. I always feel Blink is a better option against the Stargate. Depends what he comes out with the Stargate. I mean, if it's going to be Phoenix initially, I'm really not too sure how great it's going to be for Pal. Maybe an Oracle can do some damage, but again, unlikely with Blink on the way. Third gateway finishing up here for Showtime. So, I mean, he's pretty much set in terms of his production. It's going to be an Oracle, but again, how much damage can an Oracle really do? Well, quite a lot if Showtime moves out on the map, but... As soon as that oracle commits forward, these stalkers, they will just blink on top of it, and that should be a dead oracle. Nine times out of ten. Look at this from Paolo. 
really being aggressive here. Stalker numbers are dead equal, but it's going to actually be Pal who gets the first Stalker kill. He gets two Stalker kills for Non, and that is a brilliant stop from Pal here. What a great way to start this little bit of an engagement. A Voidry on the way forward now as well, as I don't know what he's actually really seen. He's seen this Robo, but you should know from the timing of that, that it's going to be uh, something. It's not just going to be a Robo here. That was a uh, good control by... Uh, uh, sorry, by Showtime right now. Picks off two Stalkers and now a third, so he gets three Stalkers for one there, which brings us all together to three Stalkers dead for three Stalkers dead on either side. Showtime a little bit behind his supply, and that is actually going to be an army. Here comes the Oracle crossing the map now, and the Void Rate on the way as well here. And, uh, well, Blink has finished up, so these Stalkers will just out and the Stalkers of Pal. Pal going to just try and do as much damage as he can right now, but good control by Showtime, pulling back his injured unit. And uh, making them last just a little bit longer, and he will actually uh, push back Showtime here towards his uh, mineral line. Showtime feeling like he has to pull a probe there for a couple of moments. Uh, Pal, probably time to get out of there though. I mean, without Blink, it's really hard for him to really make anything too much happen here. There's that Oracle getting blinked on, but it doesn't quite go down. Six health remains on it. Uh, Pal thinking about what he wants to do here. He's still got this pile on the high ground. Not utilizing it right now. Showtime's about here. Supply block if he isn't careful. Uh, though if he takes a fight, then it's going to be okay. Voidry here to help out and how effective this is going to be. Pal moves back up to this high ground. Pal about to be supply block too. So both of these guys about to hit supply block in what's a very in what is a very intense game right now. Robotics facility coming down for Pal back at home. But he's saying right. I think it's time to just back off. Try and stabilize here. But it's going to be Showtime. He feels confident enough to move down on the map with these uh, stalkers now he just have blinks so anything he runs into that's a little bit troublesome he can get out of pretty quickly Pal remaking his mothership call lost that during the engagements there and uh, I guess we're gonna have an expansion from both players Showtime will be the first to throw down the expansion oh no he will not Pal and shuts that down Bringing his own uh, work probe down here, and that's going to get shut down in tonight as well. So, expansions tonight by you can play right now. Showtime just getting up his plates on the low ground. Showtime will finally get his expansion up with this probe. So, Nexus on the way. An immortal on the way here for uh, Pal. You can see he's kind of like a little bit unsure about really moving down the ramp and engaging into these Blink Stalkers. I feel like he's got enough though with this Void Rate, especially to help, and some Zealots to tank too. I think he's got more than enough to actually just move down and. Take as natural, but if you just wait for an immortal, that's just for safety's sake. However, sentries are on the way, so time is kind of ticking. Oracle has uh, been in, not really done too much though. And here are these sentries, so now it's a little bit late for Pal to really be able to move down this ramp. He might even just have to get a warp, a guy warp prism out next. Because he has to kind of come down. There's the force field. Ooh, nice blink forward, and that oh, just doesn't get the mothership call there. That could have been a good pickoff. I mean, pick off the mothership call, and you're in a good position. I mean, it's, uh, you know. Pal can't use that in a fight, he's going to really delay him being able to move down. I mean, Showtime behind this, he is getting that next up, it's already 75% of the way done, so he's going to get a lot of economy out here, a lot faster than his opponent already, his work count is starting to be in a bit of a lead. His army supply is behind, so it's very important to keep this army behind, uh, back in his opponent's base. Showtime though, he's probably got pretty good game sense on this, he'll probably, we've seen already today that he's got pretty good game sense, so I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, does decide want, uh, to move back home very soon, because we have got a warp prism coming out, um, we'll see what it wants to pick up, I mean, we could see it actually ferry years maybe down to the low ground here and coming for a sandwich on this, oh, he picks up the sentry and now this is going to have to be a blink away from uh, Showtime, this was a really nice actual play here by uh, Pal, he made the single phoenix to lift up the sentry with the energy, and deny that, and uh, it does get a couple extra units than you would usually expect. And he's got a mortal as well. I think counterattacking here is a really nice idea. He can put a few units into the main base with a war prism. You can see now he's going for something similar himself. Oh no! Oh my God! Is he gonna drop the sentries on the high ground? And it's not gonna work so well though, right? Because the stalkers have blink. But I guess it's only gonna be the stalkers that can kind of blink up. So uh, a little bit intrigued as to what it's going to be, it's going to be Zelda just going to the main base, so nothing too tricky here, but Showtime will have to uh, position his units well to ensure not to take too much damage from this, as uh, at the same time, it's going to be Pal thinking about pushing up this ramp here, and there's a time warp coming down, it's going to be uh, the Oracle coming in, leading the charge, just go down, Zelda already in this um, base, but nice positioning by Showtime with the throw and overcharge, able to defend this fairly easily for now, Pal backing off. And has got Nexus coming up behind this Showtime with two extra gateways. 
will take a production lead here, which would be pretty significant. Showtime has a lot of energy on these remaining synergies. A couple of workers going down over here as uh, Showtime just runs a couple of zealots straight into the uh, main base, and that's all of Pal's mining currently being denied. He's still trying to push up this ramp, not quite able to make it work just yet. Though he's slowly starting to use a lot of lose a lot of these units. Showtime taking an arm supply lead, takes down the void. There's some more still in the back, but there's still blink stalkers here, of course, and blink stalkers are so so effective. As we see a sentry go down, and well, 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 I don't think Pal's got anywhere near enough anymore, and I think this is just going to be game as he loses this. GG's called, and Showtime takes ESC Icy Box onto match point in this seventh, in this uh, best of seven quarterfinal match between ESC and Max Flow play. Guys, what a series we are seeing right now. Domination, all, in all honesty, from Showtime. Uh, ESC just haven't seemed to falter since he came out and began to play for them here. So 3-1 uh, is the score, match point for ESC. Max Flow have to rely on their ace player, not just to take down Showtime, but to probably take down Goody and another player of ESC if they do want to win today. So I think it's going to be Zazu. They might completely uh, surprise me and go for someone completely different. We'll find out after this quick commercial break, guys. This is the SC2 ITL Season 2 uh, quarterfinals. And we'll be back here in about five uh, it's not five, ten minutes, uh, about three minutes time after this quick commercial break. Uh, during this break, you'll see a commercial from our sponsor, Zawi Gear. Do make sure to go over and thank them. They add a bunch of products all the time into our SC2 Improve events and really help to bolster that prize pool with those products. So, thank you for tuning in, guys. If you're enjoying the show, hit the follow button. We're like four followers away from 1,000. Uh, it'd be crazy when we hit 1,000. So, if you do enjoy the show, do hit the follow button. Guys, we'll be back here in three minutes' time with Map. Number five, ESC, which is the opportunity to close out their, the match and take a place in the semi-finals against Vegas Squadron. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're back here. Finally, we were waiting for Zazu to return, um, but Zazu didn't return. So Max Flow player have actually changed their player to Inter, and we'll be getting into this game in a couple of moments' time. Inter versus Showtime. We're just waiting for our players to accept their lobby invitations and we will be off and away. Sorry for the uh, extended delay here. As we do look to continue onwards. Um, so yeah, just uh, waiting for uh, Inter to actually accept his lobby invitation. And uh, once he has, we'll be able to get on into game number five here. Showtime on the verge of an all kill against Max Flow Play. He has taken down Soul, WMTK. He's taken down Pal as well. And now only Inter stands in his way from completing the all kill and sending an ESC Icy Box into a semi final match against Vega Squadron. And as uh, we get our team set in the Game Heart lobby, I'll ask if these two guys are ready. And if they are, we're going to get into game number five of this best of seven, ladies and gentlemen. It's the SE2 ITL quarterfinals. And we're loading up into our game right now. Waystation our map for ZVP. Let's see which spawns we are going to get. Yeah, is it going to be the close spawns? Is it going to be the far spawns? That is our real question. It will definitely dictate the kind of game we will see out of these players. Alright, so we're just waiting. And uh, we're waiting for the load screen to get done with here so that we can go on into this game number five. Alright, we're here. We've got close spawns, interestingly. Um, which I feel will definitely favour our Protoss player a little bit more in this uh, in this game. Let's see if the blue Protoss player in the lower left hand corner from ESC Icy Box can close this out and send them into the semi finals. It's showtime here in the bottom left hand corner. In the upper right, we have a purple. 
Zerg player. For max flow play, it's Inter. Again, now relied on from his team to uh, take the next few maps here. Look at this, a very fast uh, drone coming out. I wonder if this is just immediately going to be either to check, right? Two things, either check for proxies very, uh, very, very, very early. Or because he wants to hatch first, proxy hatch his opponent's natural expansion. We actually saw Jonah do that last night here in AT Gaming against Gravity. And uh, he tried to proxy hatch his opponent's natural and it didn't work out too well for him. Uh, the follow-up just completely killed him off, so we'll see what happens here. It looks as though Inter's gonna think twice about what he wants to do. He kind of clicked towards the natural there for a moment, but didn't see anything. And what does he opt to do now? He uh, just checks around the main base. There's still no pull-up, so he can go still hatch first on the low ground. Um, but it doesn't see, uh, seem to be... Well, it might be. He's moving back down here. Is he going to throw it down? No, it doesn't look as though he is. It looks as though he's going to hatch first on this side of the map, so... That drone gets him some information here, gets him the information our gateway expand is on the way. And he might choose to go for three hatcheries before pool because of this. Now this drone is on the way back, where is it heading? It looks as though it is heading up towards that third base, so this early scout has allowed him now to uh, turn greedy. And he will take his third hatchery here before throwing down a spawn pool. This probe on this side of the map though will give Showtime the information he needs to know this. Um, so that's pretty nice from here as he continues to just annoy the drones from uh, mining as low as he can. Moves down now with this probe. Third actually about to start up here for Inter and there it is. The probe's gonna check over here, we'll spot this almost immediately. A zealot on the way for him. And uh, he might very well decide just to be aggressive with this. He did definitely see that with that probe. So uh, he might move across the map and try and be aggressive. With gas on the way as well for Inter, so his pool isn't gonna be up for quite some time. A zealot on that third base could get a fair amount of damage on it before anything really comes out for Inter to be able to defend. Zealot does indeed complete and it is going to move down to at least the natural. How far across the map will it go? It looks as though it's going to be going at least a little bit further right now and it is going to head off across the other side. So uh, Showtime taking his own expansion behind this and uh, will of course know his opponent's being fairly greedy so he'll know himself. He even needs to be very aggressive to shut this down or well, he needs to match that greed as best as he can. And, you know, right now, initially here, he will try and be a little bit greedy. He will tr uh, sorry, try and be a little bit aggressive. He will try and do a little bit with this initial zealot, try and get some damage done with this. As he comes towards this natural expansion. And uh, we'll maybe chase down this drone as well. Uh, it doesn't quite get it just yet, so no damage done as of yet, uh, quite yet, but it's got a little bit longer still. The spawn pool is about to finish up, so a little while until the queens and the lings come out. But it looks as though he's just going to get out of here with this zealot, get back across the map and uh, head back home so not really too much done here actually it kind of forced I suppose it kind of forced six zerglings you know them six zerglings could uh, could have been drones because there's not actually anything now on his side of the map being too aggressive here so yeah uh, these uh, things just checking out checking for any pylon in his base the probe and a mothership core Joining up with the Zealot and they're gonna head towards uh, the top side of the map and try and come in towards this third base Three extra gateways coming up in the wall for showtime is he will actually choose the aggressive option here to try and uh, Even out this free hatch before pool opening from his opponent. Zerg speed on the way uh, Gas continued to be mined here. So Inter if he if he knows about this he can throw down a roach one. He can make a few roaches fairly quickly but uh, Showtime is gonna get very aggressive here very very soon in this third base. I'm a little bit worried about it uh, I mean, he spots it now. He sees these three gateways at the front. He knows that there's four gateways down on the map. So he knows that this kind of regression sh uh, is probably coming towards him. Six zerglings are, are made from him here immediately, but I don't think he's going to put down a road run. Okay, now he is. But, uh, I mean, he's kind of too late, right? Like... These zerglings run past this pylon for now. They actually just miss these zealots heading out or coming a couple of steps further forward. Now these zealots are going to head towards this third base and this third base is pretty much just dead. I mean, Zergen Speed can come in uh, as, as soon as it likes. It's not really going to help here because uh, these zealots are going to be in position where they can just continue to you know, have very little surface area around them for these zerglings to uh, attack onto. They do catch ones that a little bit uh, running off into a little bit of an interesting location. But uh, again, there's no way this mid base can be safe. He's going to jump in for the zerglings now. It's so inefficient to trade against these zealots. He's having to make more and more zerglings too, just so that he knows he's going to be able to hold on. His Rotor and finishes here. He's got a lot of gas for Ed. Uh, saved up, so he will be able to make a fair few roaches. A lot of links going down again, really not achieving all too much here. 
Third base will fall here as well in a couple moments time. This queen is uh, getting into the best position it can. Broodling to pop out from that dead hatchery now. And uh, the queen try to be kept alive. I mean, it will definitely go down to some point here. Uh, Lynx come in once again, get one more Zell, another queen over here. And I will try and just kite around with this for a little while as well. Showtime behind this robot facility does sob it, but continues to warp and sell it. One of these first rotors which comes out is going to get taken down. Both queens have fallen over here as well. Inter in so much trouble as uh, Pure Zealot may just end up killing him. He's probably going to come to, uh, I mean, Showtime should just head straight towards the natural here. I suppose it depends how confident he is feeling, but okay, he's going to go for it. He's going to pull these out towards the natural. There's just nothing here at all. Absolutely nothing, and this could be it for Maxwell play. They've played out this whole season, they made it to the playoffs, but that is pretty much it because it looks as though ESC with Showtime are going to be able to take them down and they say, you're not going any further, we are going to take our places in the semi-finals. Last season they did lose in the round of 16 maybe? I'm not too sure, I'll check that out in a minute though. Um, as you do see these uh, drones in the main base getting absolutely just decimated, more and more roaches coming out. But uh, so many workers already killed, 22 drones, 44 probes, and any kind of follow-up attack here from our Feroz player will be more than enough to shut down our Zerg in the very near future. So, 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 guys, this is uh, definitely potentially it. Now I feel for our uh, player here. Let's see, um, for uh, Maxwell player and for Inter. Continue to move around still. Just uh, with these roaches, you know, he's going to stay in this game as long as he can, but again, it's going to be very tough to come back from this p p position. Roaches all just sitting on this natural, can't really afford to take a third base anymore. He knows, I think, an attack's coming towards him. He's still just spamming out units, but even if he spams out units, he just doesn't even have any economy behind this right now. As uh, ESC Icy Box, they're looking as though they're about to come in here. Uh, sorry, Showtime from ESC Icy Box, looking as though he's about to come in here and propel his team forwards into the semi finals of season two. Um, they, yeah, okay, they fell in the quarterfinals last season, so again, another team who's looking to go one step further here. AT Game, the team have already done that as well. Vegas Squadron 2, so here we go. These units coming forward, and this is the last stand for Max Real Play and Inter. These Immortals are going to add so much DPS to this primary, uh, pretty much Roach Army. The Force Fields will just seal the deal as well here, yeah, and these Roaches are not going to be able to do anything. Nice pullback on the Immortals. Some more Zealots here, two tanks, and Inter calls the GG. ESC move into the round of four. And very interestingly, that is now three semi finalists of our four. Who are um, who? Who did not make the semi-finals last uh, season? Let's uh, very quickly, guys, update this uh, t uh, playoff bracket for you guys, so you can see exactly what is going on between these. Uh, what is going on in our playoffs, and what games you have to look forward to in the coming week or two, week or two. So, I'll just very quickly edit the uh, score here. Is four one in the end to ESCIC box Showtime pulling off the all kill. And uh, congratulations to them. So, um, where are you? See, there they are, 4 1. And that will put them up into the semi finals there. So, save page. We'll be able to bring this on screen for you in a couple of moments' time. Um, so, there we have it. Okay, so let's bring this up once again. So, ESC with a 4 1 victory today. They move themselves into the semi finals where they will play against Vegas Squadron, who beat. Um, he beat against all authority about a week ago now. Congratulations to them once again, to both of them teams. So that is our lower semi-final here. The victory in the semi-final guarantees you at least some of the prize money uh, as they head into the fight, as they would head into the finals then. Uh, Mind Sanity versus Alien Invasion in the top half of the bracket as our final quarter-final. As you can see down here, it's scheduled for July the 8th, last Tuesday. So a few days time for our final quarter-final. We might even have the semi-final before then. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. That quarterfinal will put them up against, uh, the winner of this quarterfinal does go up against AT Gaming in the semi-finals. So again, as I was saying, really interesting last season AT Gaming fell in the round of eight. ESC, they fell in the round of eight as well. And uh, Vegas Gordon, they actually fell in the round of 16. So a lot of teams, Mind Sandy slash Alien Invasion are our only teams here at this point who have uh, 
who have made it uh, further, who have who will have made it to the semi-finals twice in a row. AI last season they got knocked out four three in the semis against my insanity. My insanity, of course, last season's victors. So that is our playoff bracket, guys. Um, four one today for ESC against Max Flow Play. All thanks to Showtime, and uh, big congratulations uh, once again to both uh, teams involved. Uh, to both teams involved, Max Flow Play, of course, congratulations time for making it so far. Fantastic runs this season for them. One of the underdog teams, and they made it this far and made it here to food uh, and made it to the playoffs and put on a good showing. ESC just too good today though. And they do take that 4-1 victory. Guys, as I said, we're going to be back later tonight in three and a half hours' time with SC2 Improved Team League America, our first official broadcast team, Gravity Take on Integrity Gaming in three and a half hours. I'm going to be going off and doing all the uh, admin work to get that set up and ready to go. So uh, if you're interested in that, do uh, come back in three and a half hours, hit the follow button to see when we go live with that. Otherwise, if you want to check out all of our SC2 Improved news, then head on over to sc2improved.net. You can check us out on Twitter at sc 2 underscore improve. If you want to check out our VODs, then youtube.com slash sc 2 improve is the place to go. And finally, if you're more of a Facebook person, then facebook.com slash sc 2 improve is the place to head on over to. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed the show, hit the follow button on Twitch so you can see when we go live again in the future. I've been Wardy. This was ESC taking a 4-1 victory in the quarterfinals of ESC 2 ITL Season 2. And uh, Max will play, unfortunately, fall in the quarterfinals. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time. Uh, and again, I'll be back here later tonight. Don't miss out on next week's quarterfinal match between Mind Slanty and Alien Invasion, Tuesday the 8th from 6pm CST. Guys, thanks for tuning in tonight. See you all later.